Hello and welcome to my basic guide for the Caverns and Dwarf Fortress. In this video I'm going to give you a quick tour around the subterrane areas of this world and I'm going to explain what you can expect there, what you can find there, how to prepare yourself for what's to be uh, encountered there and well I'm going to try to keep this as spoiler free as possible so I don't want to get, take away all the fun of all the things that can be found here but I'm going to give you a couple of tips and tricks along the way to prepare yourself to not doom your fortress immediately. So first of all let's talk about the caverns themselves. The caverns are to be found on every map roughly around the elevation of 5 and 10 and they connect the subterrane world so uh, every tile here is always open at some point to the borders of the map which means there's migration there's monsters coming non-stop so the underground areas are therefore only safe where you make them safe that's the first rule here there's no safety in the underground unless you made it safe that's really important to note because there can be all manner of different monsters wander in. The caverns also come in three layers. So there's level one, level two, and level three. Once you've breached below level three, you will find the magma sea. I'll leave it there for this video. The magma sea is its own cup of tea. But uh, once you once you've known once you've hit a layer where it's all magma, congratulations, you have passed the caverns. The three layers of the caverns are also succeedingly more difficult so if you struggle with what's uh, on layer one you should probably not breach layer two and also you should note usually layer one and layer two are connected with each other so it's really hard to uh, to to dissect them from each other and it comes back to the basic rule again it's only safe where you made it safe so while we're at the topic of safety one rule of thumb that i really can recommend Reach open the caverns only at the moment where you have a fully functional squad of military dwarves. It's really the best way of keeping your fortress safe. Make sure they're well geared up, as good as possible, and then you're good to go for a little uh, for a little uh, exploration down in the caverns. So, what's to be found? Let's continue with that before we go into the safety department deeper. We can find down here various treasures. First of all, what's to be mentioned is wood. Wood grows underground. Where are you trees? Here. There's lots of trees underground to be found and they regrow there. So if your biome doesn't feature much above ground wood, eventually you'll find a lot of it in the caverns. And it's naturally regrowing. So eventually this is a, uh, a endless source of wood. Also, there is muddy ground. Everywhere there's muddy ground. What that means, you have here the best spot to do your farming. But uh, like I said before, you gotta make it safe. Otherwise, it's a death trap for your dwarfs. Another thing that's to be found here is spider silk. As you see there, there's cave spider silk everywhere. That's uh, the stuff being produced by those little critters that wander around there. Spider silk on its own is one of the best fabric materials in the game. It's light, it's durable, your dwarfs will love it. And the only price is it has to be collected from down below. So to continue the tour or to finish the tour here, you can find wood, animals, lots of different animals and monsters down below. Also, there is uh, the every now and then vein of super rare minerals and gemstones, but handle these with care they have sometimes really nasty surprises hidden inside. What that means in a nutshell is you gotta be ready for monsters and you gotta be ready to seal off your base if necessary and you gotta be ready to take surprises because you never know what's in the, in the box. There can be all manner of different things in the caverns from relatively harmless things to absolutely nightmarish uh, monstrosities that just try to murder your entire base. There's everything in there. So let's talk about preparations and safety precautions. So I already mentioned the military, that was uh, pretty much uh, a no-brainer, but let's talk about other things. So as you see here, doors. Uh, well, doors are the most basic sort of safety, but there's a lot of critters down there that have the the ability to just destroy doors so these are not a ultimate main means of safety the interesting part though is 
A monster that can destroy doors cannot destroy a hatch from down below. It can destroy the hatch, though, if it is on the same level. So if the monster would be here, it would be able to rip out the hatch from the ground. If the monster would be here, a locked hatch would lock it down here. So first rule of engagement, make sure that you can make a situation like this where the monster can only access your, your main base from down below, so the hatch is safe. Doors are no real safety, but they delay the monsters. What is a real safety, though, is a wall. So everything you wall off is ultimately safe from the monsters. Monsters cannot destroy walls. If you want to see through a wall, which is uh, also quite fair, use a fortification. Fortifications will block creature movement, your soldiers can see and fire through, but it's uh, as indestructible as a wall. But, uh, well... This goes both ways. If there's any attack which can cross through a fortification, you'll get there. You get that as well. The next thing which I'm using here are cage traps and jet traps in general. So traps are really awesome. Make it uh, especially so that the monsters have no choice except for walking in there. For example, here we could just set up a little bit of a wall here. And uh, then we could layer this with, uh, with either cage traps or... or deadlier traps, whatever you prefer. The wonderful thing about cage traps is they can get your can get you exotic animals, which you can then train and tame and breed eventually. It's up to you. Cage traps are awesome, but uh, the TLDR of all this is traps are really good. Manipulate the environment and make sure to make the best out of it. If you want to create underground farms, by all means, just uh, wall off the area and make sure that when you scroll upwards, there's no open layer. So for example, if we'd create here a farm, this would be quite dangerous because up above us, there are still Z levels. I'm scrolling upwards here. Check out the elevation if you're not noticing what I'm doing here. And what that means, if there'd be flying monsters, they'd be just going from up here Sush and go on in there and kill off your stupid little farmers. How to avoid that? Well, build roofs or, or look for safer spots. It's really important, I want to point it out. Scroll upwards. Don't feel safe only because you have safe because you have walled off one Z layer. Always make sure that the area above you is safe as well. So the next safety precaution is in the standing orders. Your dwarfs have a very, very suicidal task from the beginning. And uh, here in the standing orders, this is the default setting. Automatically collect webs. Who does that? That is, that's so amazingly dumb. Your dwarfs would then, if you'd breach open the caverns, just go down there and casually collect all the webs that they can find. By all means, we want those web webs, but uh, you, you really should coordinate that way better and uh, disable that setting. It's just killing your dwarfs for no good reason at all. And as the last thing before I end in this video, when you open up the caves, or well, two things actually, when you open up the caves, you change the map in so far as this will happen. So every tile of soil above the caverns will ultimately grow floor fungus. This happens the moment you breach to open the caverns for the first time. So floor fungus is basically like underground grass. Where there's floor fungus, you can let grazing animals even live. So if you have a uh, pasture area here like, uh, like this, you could keep your animals safe underground. So this is a good reason to breach open the caverns early. But the other thing that I wanted to mention as an outro for this video, the moment you breached open the caverns, you can also get visitations from forgotten beasts. They wander inside the map and they're basically, well, randomized monstrosities that uh, have truly random skills, a truly random setup, and all in all, prepare for your prepare yourselves when you're opening the caverns to seal off your base in one way or another. If there's ever anything migrating on your map which you don't know how to kill, the best way is just to be able to seal off the place and think about it later how to deal with that. In my scenario, I'm using a setup for example like that. Here we have a entire barracks of military dwarfs and the door and the hatch here 
are both linked to a lever that I called Seal the Mines, and whenever there's uh, too much happening there, we're just sealing off the place. We're sending the military dwarfs downstairs, seal off the place, and then to be sure that nothing can come, just wall off the place, and uh, you can just take care of that. Just wanted to mention the Forgotten Beasts, because... If you don't take the, the precautions to seal off yourself somehow, they can easily kill off your entire fortress, and that would be a little bit sad. All the rest I leave to you. So this video will end with a last part. I just realized that I missed one thing, how to explore this place. Then I'm off for that. So exploration, I'm going to cover the two basic and easiest methods. So you can select one squad of military dudes and then just send them somewhere via the stationing uh, orders and then they'll just walk towards there and uh, kill off everything. The caverns are wide and excessive and this is a pretty dangerous task which you should totally monitor from beginning to the end. And the other quite easy method is that the moment you breach open the caverns there is going to be a steady flow of monster slayers that want to live in your city. So monster slayers, they have this icon here, they do nothing except for chilling out a little bit in your base and then go explore the caverns and get ultimately killed or kill something down there. So you can use those monster slayers as a easy mean, easy ways and means to explore the caverns and they'll also clear out some nasties for you along the way and uh, there are lots of other ways and means to explore the caverns but i'll leave it with that so i'm going to go for another video about the caverns in the future i guess but i want to end here where i think i gave you a nice overview and i hope you enjoyed that so far leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or anything you might want to add also consider leaving a thumbs up on that video to make it more visible for everybody else and of course consider subscribing there's daily content on my channel coming up and i'd be really happy if you'd check it out also you can find a playlist link in the description box which leads you to the playlist of all the dwarf fortress tutorials i've made so far and a big thanks to all the supporters of this channel. Without you guys, this channel cannot work like it does, and I really, really appreciate. If you want to check out how it works, the description box has links to Patreon, Paypal, and Buy Me A Coffee, and I'd be really, really happy if you'd give them a look. If not, well, it's up to me to say thanks for watching this video up until the very end. After all the ad rolls, you're still here. Thanks for that. Helps me a lot, and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.